Hi everyone. It's great pleasure to address you at the 12th International Conference on Mathematical Modeling in Physical Sciences. I'm Dr. Mahendra Samarawikrama, Director of the Center for Consciousness Studies in Australia and an honorary visiting scholar at the University of Technology Sydney. Today I'm going to present my research paper titled Mathematical Modeling of Consciousness for Unifying Causation, Relativity and Quantum Mechanics. Quantum physics and gravity are two different concepts which need to be unified in a widely acceptable way to understand reality. While electromagnetism, weak nuclear force and strong nuclear force were accurately unified under the framework of quantum field theory, gravity remains elusive and couldn't be unified with quantum mechanics. However, gravity is accurately modeled by the theory of relativity which is not complementing quantum physics. Gravity is an exceptional experience in reality. In relativity, the bend of space-time near Mars is defined as gravity, which Albert Einstein modeled precisely in general relativity. After studying relativity, John Wheeler stated, space-time tells matter how to move and matter tells space-time how to curve. However, relativity doesn't explain the causation of bending space-time near mass or gravity. Yet, it is validated as a correlated phenomenon of light bending near mass explaining the curvature of space-time near mass. In physics, many cosmological phenomena revalidated the accuracy of relativity which lay a strong foundation for our understanding of the behavior of relativity but not the causation. In our journey towards understanding causation, we previously published a paper and established that consciousness, matter and energy interplay and create reality. It suggested Consciousness and change are the fundamentals of reality which govern the causation. Let's try to understand the causation of relativity from consciousness. First, time is a construct based on the consciousness underpinning awareness of change in reality. If the environment is homogeneous, there will be no experience of external change, hence no passing of time or boundary of space. Therefore, space-time is completely perceived by consciousness. Additionally, the observer's self-awareness that emerged from consciousness is an attribute of life. Self-awareness is unique to individual life forms, creating subjective experiences and perceptions. Since consciousness is a sequential process subjected to change, self-awareness can experience space-time based on its own conscious process without being aware of external change. Therefore, Space-time and observations are relativistic experiences based on consciousness and change. In the broad sense, that experience in reality, not what it caused, was modeled in the theory of relativity. Because consciousness is fundamental and create matter and reality, we postulated that reality behaves such that awareness is preserved and maintain the integrity of conscious experiences. Everything in nature, including the principles of least action, follows this integrity. Therefore, the causation of gravity is the integrity of conscious experience or preserved awareness when matter and energy interact and interplay. This means the bending of space-time near mass is caused by consciousness creating matter and space-time, which appears to be relativistic. It is not that space-time tells matter how to move or matter tells space-time how to curve. Rather, it should be narrated as consciousness imparted matter and space-time to behave in such integrity in awareness, causing relativity. Since the fundamental consciousness process is not apparent, relativity is interpreted as fundamental law of nature disregarding consciousness and causation. First, let's understand the special theory of relativity from the awareness perspective. Let's assume a reader with a book and an atomic clock in a spaceship. We analyze the system when the spaceship moves at a constant speed of v1 and v2 where v1 is less than v2. Notice that time and consciousness both are dilated at v2 speed related to v1. Therefore, the ratio of the number of consciousness cycles to the atomic clock cycles remain constant. Because of the perceived awareness, the pages read also remain consistent with the number of consciousness cycles and the atomic clock cycles on both occasions. We call that the reader is in the preserved awareness where the reader always experiences integrity in reality. 
that is how the special theory of relativity is understood through consciousness next let's understand the general theory of relativity or gravity from the awareness perspective let's assume the same reed is moving at v1 speed passing a mass the only freedom by nature the system has in motion is in a way the awareness is preserved if they need to maintain a constant speed v1 then they move in a curved space time such that it is described in the general theory of relativity however the causation of this motion is not due to curved space time but rather constraint in preserved awareness when the reader moves at constant v1 speed near the mass in curved space time the number of consciousness cycles the atomic clock cycles and the pages read remain consistent regardless of the time and consciousness dilation the postulate that gravity is a constraint preserving awareness when interacting with consciousness matter and energy is not in contradiction with einstein's relativity since relativity is a correlative framework explaining gravity however based on consciousness we can now establish the causation of gravity which can unify relativity and quantum mechanics under a common framework based on consciousness thank you everyone for participating in this presentation